Hello everybody and welcome finally to my build video for the Magic of Templar. I cannot tell you how much testing has gone into this build. Um, I have probably tried like every set combination known to man and I have finally found a build that I'm really comfortable with. So the reason Magpul has taken so much of a hit this patch is because the healing nerf really hits home on this class. Magpul's best defense is its healing capacity and that no longer really exists. So you have to build quite differently this patch to how you've ever had to previously. Now, the obvious solution is to go for heavy, which gives us more healing and powered, but even this was not enough mitigation and you were still taking too much damage. So I had to find a way to get Potente in there and a new Malika, and it all gets very complicated. And so we have fallen onto this. Now I've tried this and other setups, and this is the preference. Previously, I was using two Groftar, I was front barring Overwhelming, and I was back barring Stern, Alchemist, all of these nice damage sets. It's too lacking. The mitigation from those is too bad. The uptime and the benefit from it is not good enough. But fortunately, there is a second proc that is infinitely better than Overwhelming now, and that is this bad boy, which we've used in the past and is recently buffed and hands down one of the, the most underrated items and skills in the game. Two Groftar and one Black Rose Perfected Lightning Staff, which is the cost of Impulse by 10%. Impulse places a lingering elemental damage on your target, dealing 5,233 flame, shock, and frost damage over eight seconds. Now, for those who don't know what that is, on a player, we're talking the best part on that proc of about two to three K per pulse. That is a lot of damage. This is a really, really juicy proc set. It's very, very hard, and you get in the One Piece Spell Pen. This makes it awkward on our jury because we're using Malakath to buff both the procs, Groftar and Black Rose. And I think that's a very good way to go around the patch this, uh, the damage this patch. So what we've then done is to up our mitigation with the heavy set that we're gonna come into in a sec. We're using two Potente on the front bar and four, even though the fourth piece is wasted, on the back bar. And you'll see why that reduction of cost of Ultima is so useful in a second. Last but not least, we're using Heavy Seducer. I think this is the best way to sustain right now. I've tried a lot of different sets here. You could run a damage set, you could run this, that, and the other. In the end, I assure you, you're better off going for Seducer. But if you do want to stack out damage, you could have actually run a lot of sets here. Again, you could go for Stern, Alchemist, Rattle Cage, if you don't want to run my normal pots. There's so many options you could run here. Seducer is simply my preference of those options. Uh, but yeah, you do you. I will show you why I think Seducer is the best in a sec. Now, something really interesting on here is our glyphs. We are running three infused reduction of cost glyphs. Now, this is really important because the way our skill on the back bar misform is calculated accommodates for the reduced cost glyphs first in calculations and takes the full value of the calculation because of how they are put in, which means my mist is only costing me 75 magicka, which means whenever I'm in misform, I profit Magicka. This is sustaining me. It is not just something I can use to escape. I can physically use it to sustain. It is almost a free cast. In reality, it's a profitable cast. Our glyphs on these sets then are a triglyph on the big pieces and a Magicka glyph on the small pieces. Again, free infused reduction of cost. Front bar, I like diseased and back bar, I like frost. This might be liable to change. Um, there's a good chance I'm going to run a charged instead of sharpened. I just simply don't have the transmute gems right now. So I haven't got that as an option quite yet. The charged will guarantee disease. It will guarantee maim from blockade, which we'll show in a sec. And it will guarantee concussion from your pulsar cast. And it guarantees burning from Grofdar. Our stats then are as follows. They don't look nearly as pretty as the damage output we're actually putting. 32.5k magicka. 16.75k stamina. For those interested, that is 28k magicka and 14 in no CP and 22 and a half health. In CP, we have 26 and a half health. And then magic recovery looks very low, but in reality, we're stacking reduced cost, which is a more efficient sustain in heavy armor builds this patch. So we stack the reduced cost as high as possible, and that is sustaining us rather than regen. Spell damage at 1831, pretty much what I've been in in every magic power build I've played for a very long time. I think it puts you right on the money as long as you've got the procs behind you and the procs are very, very important on a magic part to get really good damage. Crit chance doesn't matter too much, though I am gonna be using a pot that increases my crit because it's still relevant on our heal, which is something I mentioned in previous. And our resistances as a high elf are as follows. 
This is in the circle 27 and 23, and outside of the circle buffed, we are on 21 and 24. Nice high tankability, especially in combination with Potente. Our skills are where stuff gets very radical. We are using Toppling Charge for the Gap Closer. Everyone knows this, it also sets off balance. Now this off balance is not only gonna increase our damage in our CP, but it's also gonna open a heavy attack on an off balance target in heavy armor, which is gonna be anywhere between 12 and 15K Magicka back in one heavy attack. So if you are ever low, if you do get a window, Toppling Charge in one heavy attack and you're gonna get a huge Magicka return. We're then using jabs, this is our main spell ball, elemental drain for minor magic still and the penetration buff. Remember that penetration buff is really vital on your procs since it's the only thing increasing those. But if you are struggling to keep good uptime 1vx, you can also go for radiant aura. It's gonna cost you a lot of damage 1v1 and focusing single targets, but it is really nice to make sure you've got that magic still up. Number four is purifying light for our main burst and minor sorcery, easy, reliable proc at the right time. But number five is going back to Storm Pulsar, which is still my favorite skill on a magic bar. It was a shame to have to drop it last patch. I'm very glad to have this bad boy back. So this inflicts minor mangle. And for those who don't know what that does, that reduces max health by 10%. It's difficult to understand just how good this is in the current meta. Just this debuff alone, before we even look at the black rose dot behind it. A lot of people are stacking high, high, high max health which means their max health is reduced by a significant amount. This is a percentage reduction. Let's take somebody with 20k health, they only lose 2k in burst, whereas 40k health loses 4k, for example. This is also particularly useful against wardens where they're healing scales of health. Necros, um, which are generally gonna Goliath up and then you get a huge reduction on them. And in particular, Sorks, because on Sorks, their shields will scale off health and Magicka. And this would not only reduce the health, but also their stat, um, also the size of their shield, which means they're getting a double dip in reduction. The dot on this from Pulsar is amazing, and I recommend this so strongly. But if you do not want to run it, you can by all means run a Master Staff here. You do not need the perfected version. The normal version is extremely easy to do. I can solo it with no gear. So you can definitely get this no matter how inexperienced you are, if you do wish to try this, and I promise you it's worth it. You're only gonna lose 1.2k pen, it's not the end of the world. Front bar ulti is gonna be our standard crescent sweep. This is our burst ulti, but I'm using this a lot less this patch. This is only if you get a combination where they're burstable, they're sitting on lowish health, your power of the light's about to go off and you crescent into power of the light explosion with your dot set. Back bar, we've got all sorts of skills going on. Our standard skills are our main heal, honor the dead with a nice tooltip on there. Purify, we use the damage morph. This is so much damage, this is 19% to 30% of your damage depending on a fight. It's so much AOE damage. But if you do not survive well, if you're less experienced in the magic player, you should definitely take the other morph which is gonna increase your survivability quite significantly. I've got very comfortable using this and I recommend it strongly if you do get practiced, but it's up to you whether you can manage it. I finally use the Stamina Morph of Restoring Focus. Again, if you've seen my previous build videos, I personally recommend this over Magicka. Stamina Sustain is one of the weakest points of Magicka, and even as a high off with tripods in heavy armor, I would still use this. I'm not using tripods, I'm using a different pot, but I do think this is well worth the space over anything else. What's particularly valuable about Restoring Focus, which is what value, which is why I prioritize this over the Magicka one, is that this is blocked Stamina Regen. For those who might not know, you do not regen from your base regen on your stamina tooltip. Skills, heavy armor passive, and certain sets will still generate it because they're not regen based. Which means that while I'm blocking to heal up, I can still get stamina back, which generates a huge amount of healing benefit. The same with the high health race, again, which I'll show in a bit. Now, a number of skills that are making a grand return. Blockade of Frost is back in business. For those, again, who do not know my videos, I think this is a very valuable skill on Magic Templar. You're always in melee range. This shuts down almost any stamina build with a charge start because anytime they're in there, you guarantee a root on your glyph prop, which lets you completely control the fight. It's one of the strongest dots still. It's a very nice AOE pressure, and you're gonna pop minor maim with a charge start, nearly guaranteed. This is such a good skill, I really do think it's underrated. But if you do not wish to run this, I would then drop that off. I'd run Entropy on the back bar and I would run a different potion, which I'll show you in a sec. By all means though, change the skills to how it suits you. What cannot be changed is the new version of Misform, which is excellent. 
Many of you will know that I think the old version of Misform was absolutely abysmal and I refused to use it at all. And it made even a video on it very briefly explaining why it was not worth it despite many people recommending it. A lot of the maths on it was poor. This one is now a profitable skill and really, really pairs well and also unlocks our vamp passive in stage two to gain an extra 300 spell damage on top of our base damage. Such a good skill and it's an excellent way to store for the main part of this build which is this bad boy, Swarming Silent. This is the new Vampire ulti, and this is the one with the Bat Morph, and it will heal you based on the damage you do in AoE. Well, let's have a look at our AoE. We've got the ulti bats, we've got Blockade of Frost, we've got Ritual of Retribution, and we have Pulsar, and we have Japs, and we have Grofdar, all in AoE. This is a huge amount of healing, which means when we're in bats, we can essentially just go for it. That's not always the case, of course. If you're in an awkward spot or they are stacking high damage, you may need to move. But this opens a massive offensive window of huge AoE pressure and you can really hammer down a group. I've got a number of clips of this. I always get people asking when you release a video. I will make a montage with the Templar clips alongside some other clips that I've got recently. So you will see this in action. Um, but yeah, this ult is amazing. Now, what's so good about the way we set this up is because we now have the Potentate on the back bar, we get the three piece to reduce this cost quite significantly. We're reducing this by about 40, which is very, very significant because saving up for this is a pain. Now, I did mention if you don't like Blockade and wish to go one-hand shield or just don't like Blockade and wish to go for an Ice Staff but not Blockade, you can change your pots. And the pot I would go for then is this one here. Stamina, Magicka, and Minor Heroism. Again, it speeds up your ability to get Vampire. I was pretty close to doing it, but I think Blockade is the better asset with experience. Um, but if you are not used to using Blockade or simply don't like it as a skill, it's very close. This is extremely good with this setup. You obviously are using the crit on your pot, which is gonna reduce your chance to crit your heal. And that can be a bit of a clutch lifesaver, but it's still pretty damn good. Other factors to consider, our back bar stuff must be powered. The difference on this is astronomical. I couldn't believe it. And it's another reason why I staff is what I would recommend over one hand shield. To put this in perspective, a one hand shield with a powered or known honed weapon, pretty similar stats, and a magical glyph on the back bar is about 500 less healing than we would have with the ice staff with potentates before crit and before modifiers, which means by the time you cast that heal, we're talking the best part of a thousand less, which is quite a big deal. Last but not least is going to be our race. We are a high elf, we are a stage three vampire, and we are using the apprentice. But this build is completely viable on a Breton, and there is some argument that it might be better. This is something I'm still testing, and I will see what I prefer in the long run. I'm a big fan of high elf. I think the stamina sustain works very well, um, but there is a decent amount of benefit to be seen from Breton on this, since magicka sustain is the tightest part of this build. But I think the sacrifice of Magicka Sustain, no matter which race you go for, is something you've got to go for. Um, it's generally hard to make sure you've got enough healing and damage this patch as a solo player. If you're in a Zerg, it won't matter nearly as much though. Our food is Bewitched, the Tri Food, and our general pot is going to be the Spell Damage, Crit, and Magicka. You could use this, you could use the Buy One, it really doesn't matter very much. Crafted or Alliance, it's the same thing. Um, but yeah, the crit is not going to benefit our damage because of the pay to win ring, Malakath, but we are going to get the crit on our heal, which makes it very viable. Last but not least is our CP. And we're going to start in the green tree where we're using one in Siphoner, three in Sprinter, three in Bashing. Siphoner is going to cause them to have to purge one more negative effect. And with the amount of statuses we are proccing from a charged Destro, when I get that, is significant as hell. So that's another effect which anyone with Purify is going to have to get rid of. Free and Sprinter, Free and Bashing is for Interrupt and generally moving. I don't use the Sprinter too much, but there are a few times where I will have to use it. And in those cases, the 3%, the three points for 2% is very, very good value. Seven in Warlord for reduced cost, always worth stacking this very high, it's expensive to break. 64 in Arcanist is mostly a point dump. And if you do prefer, and you're heavy attacking more, you could definitely swap this with your Tenacity and stack a lot more in heavy attacks. I try my best not to need to heavy attack, but if you prefer to heavy attack and rely on your low regen pool, definitely swap these around. If you go for Breton, I recommend keeping Arcanist. In this tree, we've got 52 in Tumbling and 52 in Shadow Ward. I actually don't know if 51 scales since it rounds. I'm almost certain it doesn't, which is why I've got 52. Um, but yeah, those two points can't really be spent better anyway, no matter how you change it. So you might as well go this way anyway. In the blue tree, we're going to 43 in Blessed to amp up the healing. 
You can adjust this as you like. Um, Magpie is pretty weird because almost every pool is pretty useful. It's very different to most classes, for example, Magic Nightblade, where you're only really looking at direct. Everything is useful on here, so we're spreading quite widely. And I think healing is a very important aspect. Again, I've mentioned it's your main defense, and you do need to make it as viable as possible. 20 in Elfborn, yes, I can't crit damage, but I can crit the heal. If you find you don't need the crit heal, ditch those points, distribute them elsewhere to your preference. I would not go over 55 in Spell Erosion. It starts to scale a lot worse. But for now, we are 52 in Spell Erosion. Again, Pen is your best um, amplifier for your proc damage on the Grothdar and the Black Rose, and it's also going to increase your damage tremendously. 37 in Elemental Expert for magic damage. Change it, up to you. And then 40 in Master Arms. This is for direct damage portions. So this is going to be for jabs, Purifying Light, Crescent Sweep, and your Light Attacks. Free into Staff Expert as well. Actually, that's not a lie. There's a couple of procs that are going to come off that as well. So I believe Grothdart is direct, and I'm not sure about the Vamp Dot. Free and Staff Expert for your Light Attacks. If I was going to go Solar Barrage, which is another optional skill you could try instead of Blockade, um, you would probably want to run 9 in there, maybe even 19, because you're going to get more out of the Empower. But free is still not bad at all. Now, 75 and Thaumaturge. This is a tough choice to make. So it's my personal belief that the amount of dots we're running here merits at least 40, maybe even 56 points in Thaumaturge. And at that point, the extra points needed to invest to get up to 75 is more profitable than spreading it in the other trees. If you do not rely on your dots nearly as much for your kill, you are welcome to drop this down significantly to about 20, 28, or 40 and then spread those points elsewhere. But it's my personal belief that Farmaturge is better overall, simply because of how close we already get to the exploit to passive in the first place. There's a lot of debate as to whether exploit to passive is worth it, but since we're already gonna put 56 in here, the 19 points cannot get 10% damage no matter what we do, especially when we look at the extra damage that also gives 12 dots. So I think this is the best way, but adjust your CP to your preference. Last but not least is the red tree, 72 in ironclad and 50 in resistant. If you do decide to change the CP, just make sure that you get 120 in this tree because you're going to want reinforced. This does add up in a long fight, well worth having. This tree is going to be 28 into resistant, we don't, sorry, thick skinned. We don't need as much for dots since we have a purify, but we're only purging two effects on this. If you do go for the other morph of purify, you could probably drop this to 20. 43 in Hardy for physical and 37 on Elemental Defender. If you're Breton, again, the Hardy is going to benefit you more. You may find more benefits swapping them out. Last but not least is the Lord, free in Elemental uh, Expert Defender, sorry, and 37 in Quick Recovery for more healing. Final question I get all the time is, does this build work in OCP? Yes, definitely. I've played this in Battlegrounds to a lot of success. Your healing is going to be less, but you're going to outpressure most opponents. If you do quite effectively a missed, you're going to be fine. Just keep in mind, there are a few builds overshining right now in Battlegrounds particularly, where people are stacking free procs behind Malakath on a Magicka DK or a Stamina DK. These are very hard to fight against, no matter what class you're on. But they're Battleground cheese builds, dual cheese builds. They're not a viable open world. And so, to be honest, I wouldn't worry about it if you do die to those. No matter what you run, you're going to struggle. That was pretty detailed. I know that was a lot, but I hope that does make this very, very uh, understandable for you guys. Again, as I always say, adjust the build as you like. If you do not like the build, you don't have to run it. But I have tried a lot of sets on Matchplot. I've tried every combination you've seen from other YouTubers, myself, my own ideas, my chat's ideas. Ideas, I've just thought, why not give it a shot? This has outperformed them all by a lot. No matter what you take from this video, I recommend going heavy and at least two potente. If you go any less, you're going to be too squishy. I hope that helps you guys. Good luck with the build video, and I'll see you in another video.